So take out your notes. I want us to discuss on the introduction to the business income. I had already shared the notes. Now, what's business income? So now business income is among the specified sources of income, which is taxable under section three, subsection, uh, subsection two of the income tax. And a business can be operated, a business can be operated either as a sole proprietorship. So various form of business. I think that a business can either be operated as a sole proprietorship or a partnership or as a company. Now, what's the difference between the three? Now, for sole proprietorship and partnership, there is no separate legal identity or there is no separate uh, taxable capacity from the owners, that the sole proprietor or the partners. But for a company, a company is uh, a person in the eyes of the rules. So that means we have a natural person, we have an artificial person. So a company is an artificial person in the eyes of the rules. And therefore, there is a different taxable capacity between the company and the owner or the shareholders. Good. So we are saying that a business can be operated as a sole proprietorship or a partnership or a company. Good. Now, what are some of the factors to consider when evaluating whether a business is the nature of trade? How can you know that these are business going on? So what are some of the factors to consider? Now, the major objective of a business is to make profit. So number one, you look at the profit motive. If the entity has a profit motive or the major objective is to make profit, so that means the business going on. So number one, we are looking at the factors to consider in evaluating whether a business is in the nature of trade or not. So number one, we think that is the profit motive. Then number two, you look at the nature of asset acquired. Nature of asset acquired. Now you cannot buy a lorry and then you claim that this is a personal car. I want to be carrying my, uh, my family using a lorry. So number one, you look at the nature of asset acquired. Then number three, uh, you look at the method of financing. So what's the method of financing? Yeah, are you using the borrowings? Are you using the savings? So you cannot carry on a business which is not profit oriented. And in this case, you are taking a loan. Why will you get the amount to finance the loan, to pay the interest? So you look at the mode uh, method of financing. Number four is the mode of asset acquisition. Yeah, is it a normal purchase or is it a lease? Eh? And then you look at the method of generating sales. Now, any business which is profit oriented, they do their marketing. If the pro business mostly is not profit oriented, it's hard for them to do uh, the marketing or do some advertisement. So if you see a business being advertised, know that their underlying objective is to make uh, the profit. Good, so that's, those are the sum of the factor to consider when evaluating whether the business is the nature of trade. And now let's look at some of the taxable business income. Now this is what happens. Eh? Now for tax purposes, we have the incomes and also we have the expenses. Now for incomes, we have two classification of incomes. Uh, we have the taxable incomes and then we have non-taxable income. Taxable income, their income, which are subjected to taxation, and taxable income, their income, which are not subjected to taxation. When it comes to the expenses, we have what we call allowable expenses. Also, we have disallowable expenses. So for the income, it's either taxable and taxable. For expenses, it's either allowable or disallowable expenses. Now, when you talk about the taxable income, now note that all the income generated by the business, they are taxable. Mostly any income generated on a day-to-day -day basis or what we call the operating income are taxable. Except, so you're saying that all incomes are taxable except the non-taxable income. So what you need to know is what? 
non-taxable. That all income are taxable, except non-taxable income, good. For expenses, any day-to-day -day, uh, expenses, that's what you call the operating expenses, are allowable expenses. So note that all the expenses are allowable, except disallowable expenses. So all expenses are allowable, except disallowable expenses. So that means if you want to understand tax well, kindly know all the non-taxable income. Any income which is not in that category must be taxable. Also for the expenses, know that all the disallowable expenses, know the category of all disallowable expenses. So any expenses that not fall under that, that means it's allowable uh, expense. So now let's look at some of the taxable business income. Taxable business income. But there is something I've said that. All income are what? Taxable, except what? Non-taxable income. So Poivo, let's look at non-taxable income. Leave the taxable income. Now let's go to the non-taxable income. Non-taxable income. Now when you talk about taxable and non-taxable, let me take you back to financial reporting. Now, how do you determine the profit? Profit is all about the income minus the expense. expenses. Now, for tax purposes, if you want to get what you call the taxable profit, you'll take the taxable incomes. Then you deduct not just the expenses, but you just deduct the allowable expenses. Now, what are those are allowable expenses? Now, allowable expenses are those expenses that reduce your tax liability. Right together. Because the more allowable expense you have, the lower the profit, right? The lower the profit, the lower the tax, right together. Yeah, so allowable expenses, they are those expenses which will be allowed for tax purposes. That means it will reduce the tax liability. Now we have some expenses such as depreciation. Depreciation is an expense, right? But it's argued that depreciation is not an actual outflow. So therefore it's a desirable expense. Expense. So if you had recognized the depreciation, for example, 300, that means they should not be allowed. In short, this expense should be taxed. Eh? So for you to understand. So note that allowable expenses, the expenses which reduces the tax liability. Good. Uh, so now we are focusing now on non-taxable incomes. One is the foreign investment income. Any income earned from the foreign investment that income will not be taxed. Why? Because that income is deemed to have already been taxed at the point of origin. Are you together? What about the foreign exchange gains? Now, foreign exchange gain, that one is not a foreign income. Are you together? That's an income by the virtue of exchanging the currencies. So that one is an operating income. But foreign investment income is an untaxable income. Number two, we have reduction in general provision for bad debt. Yeah, we know very well that an increase in provision is an expense. A reduction in a provision is a what? Is an income. So that in a reduction in a provision is not taxable income. Also, we have what? Unrealized profit. Yes, there is profit you expect, but you have not yet realized. So that profit will not be taxed until the income has been realized. Also, we have the capital gain on the sale of asset. Now, that's what we call it's an unoperating income. If the company sells its motor vehicle, assume the carrying amount was 2 million, but they sold it at 2.1. So that means there was a gain of how much? 100. Now this 100 is what we call the capital gain. Now this income will not be taxable. Right together. Because it's not an operating income. Do you know what's an operating income? Now operating income, they are income from day to day operation. For example, in a bank, what are the operating incomes? The interest income, right together. An insurance company, premiums, KCE college, fees. That's what we call an operating in income. What if we decide to sell some chairs and then we sell them at a gain? You see, that one is not our main core, right? Together. So any profit emanated from the disposal of those assets will not be taxed, will not be taxable. So that's what's saying the capital gain on disposal of assets. Number five, additional capital introduced, if you inject more capital, for example, 3 million, you see in your bank account, it will be reflected as a, on a debit side. So that income will not be taxed. Also dividend income, where the entity has at least 12.5% of the equity ownership. So where a company controls another company or has shares to an equivalent to at least 12.5% of the ownership, 
that dividend will not be taxed. Because remember, dividend attract what? What we call the withholding tax? Withholding tax. Good. Then number seven, interest income from post bank. Uh -huh. So interest income from post bank. But if you get any other interest income, maybe from the banks, from the circle, that interest, number one, will be taxed. But in case it's an interest income from the post bank, it will not be taxed. Another one, interest from the government infrastructural bond with a maturity period of more than two, two years. And actually, nowadays, all the government bond, the maturity period is more, I mean, infrastructural bond, the maturity period is more than two, two years. So that means if you invest in a government infrastructural bond with a maturity period of maybe from two years, three years, four years, five years, any interest earned will not be taxed, will not be taxed. Eh? Good. I am number nine, insurance compensation for an current asset. If you had an asset which was involved in an accident and then you received some compensation, now that amount will not be taxed. But in case it's an insurance compensation in relation to loss of stock, stock, remember it's a current asset, right? In case some stock were destroyed, then you are compensated by the insurance company, that amount will be taxed. But in case it was insurance compensation in relation to non current asset, will not be taxed, will not be taxed. Good. And then number 10, inheritance and what? Dowry. That's on an individual what? Yeah, it's on an individual basis. Aya, can you go through them again? Just go through in the non taxable income. Which point is not clear? Explain again. So let's summarize them. Eh? Actually, the key that should be at your fingertips. Number one is the foreign income investment. And you take that one. Just take that. Uh -huh. Let's go to number three. Number two. And realize profit. Also take that. And realize profit. Uh -huh. Another one. Number four. Capital gain on sale of asset. Also take one, that one. Uh -huh. Number six, dividend incomes. Also take that, dividend income. Uh -huh. Another common one is the interest income from post bank and interest from the government infrastructure bond with a maturity period of two years. Yeah, those are the key or major incomes which will be coming across under taxation of business income. Good. So now, quickly now, let's go back to where we had the taxable business income. Now, what are taxable business income? Now, for the taxable business income, number one, you have gain arising from buying and selling. Yeah, that's what we call the gain from day-to-day -day operations. Number two, realized foreign gains. Uh -huh. Then, number three, we have balancing charge and trading receipt. What is that? I'll come to explain later what is that. Eh? Yeah, mostly for our going, bis uh, for our going concern business, there are some assets which are deemed to be taxable eh, when you dispose some assets. Number four, amount of insurance 
a uh, compensation for the loss or damage of stock. Yeah, we have seen that in case there was loss of stock and you received some compensation, a lot amount will be taxed. Why should it be taxed? You see, the assumption is what's current assets or the, the inventory? They are there for trading, right? So that means if they were destroyed and you are compensated, it's like you sold the insurance company and the insurance company paid you back, right? Together. That's why it's treated as a what? As a taxable income. Because it was destroyed, you have been compensated. It's like selling the stock and receiving, I mean, uh, selling the inventory and receiving the amount. Then, number five, bad debt recovered, which has been previously been written off and was considered what? Arabable. Now, for bad debt, we have two types of bad debt as an expense. Now, we have what we call the specific bad debt, and we have general provisions. Now, specific bad debt, they are bad debt which you have confirmed with surety that you will not receive the amount, the amount, and this amount is allowable. But general provision is a desirable expense. Expense. Now, in case there is some amount you had confirmed you will not receive, that means it was written off and was considered as a allowable expense, maybe worth five hundred thousand. And then on the other financial year, you recover back the amount. But you see, previously has been treated as a allowable expense. Expense. Now, bad debt recovered is always. Re How do you recover bad debt recovered? How do you in financial reporting? Yeah? How do you recognize bad debt, which has been previously been written off, but then have been recovered? How do you treat that? As a? Yeah, as an income. So, so. Bad debt, which has been previously been written off, and then has been recovered, will be treated as a what? As an income. And in this case, will be a taxable income. Good. So now I think we are clear with the incomes. That's the taxable and untaxable income. Now let's go to the expenses. Remember you see that all expenses are what? Arable, not desirable. All expenses are allowable, except desirable expense? expenses. So what you need now to understand are what are those desirable expense? expenses? Yeah, good. So let's go to desirable expenses. That's page two. Page two of your notes. desirable expenses. Eh? Now, the expenses not only or exclusively incurred in day-to-day -day income generation. Can you understand that? Day-to-day. -day. In short, they are not operating expenses. Any expense which is not operating expense will be regarded as a desirable expense. And what are those expenses? They include, number one, capital ex expenditure on acquisition of non-current. Yeah, during the year, the company acquired some furniture, fitting, or a motor vehicle. Now that one is an outflow. It's not an expense. An expense. Or how do you do that? If the company acquires a motor vehicle, number one, you debit the asset account, right? And then you create the bank account. Now it goes to the income statement, right? Together. But expenses now relating to that motor vehicle is what you treat them as an expense. As an expense, yeah, such as fuel and maintenance expenses. So one of the desirable expenses is the capital expenditure on acquisition of non-current assets. Now, non-current assets will only qualify for what we call the capital allowance, capital allowances or wear and yeah, wear and tear. Good. Number two, personal and private expenses. Yes, for a business, any expenses that does not relate to the business, maybe by the sole proprietor or the partners or the directors. Now that expense, if it does not relate to profit generation in the company, we regard it as a private mm -hmm. expense and private expenses are desirable expense. Good. Number three, a depreciation, impairment, also provision as well as non-cash what? Expense, yeah. All depreciation, amortization, impairment. It's just a provision. So therefore they will be disallowed. So what will be allowed on an asset is what we call the capital allowance or investment allowance or when tear. Good. Number four, general provision for bad debt. But in bracket, I've written that for specific what? Yeah, we have said that 
specific bad debt are allowable expenses, but general provision is allowable what? Expense, good. Number five is what? All provision. Provision. Now, provision is not an act of truth. It's money setting aside for future uncertain, uncertainty, such as provision for doubt to death, yeah? provision for cases in the future. So all those provision are desirable expenses. Number six, tax related expenses, such as tax penalty, tax interest, all that, BAT, mm, etc. Also, number seven, fines and yeah, actually any expenses of wrongdoing is a desirable expense. Expense, eh? any cases, I mean any expenses for wrongdoing, such as maybe breach of contract. What else? Penalties, also fines. We have some expenses of the company, maybe by the director, company na mulipianga. So, so. Now, for example, you have a, an office, I mean the company motor vehicle. And then you are charged some fines, maybe due to traffic offense. Is the company will pay, eh? It's not a personal asset, it's a company asset. So now that expense, how will you treat it? Is it allowable or desirable expense? They are desirable. We have said that all expense of wrongdoings are desirable expense. Expense. But will you disclose that? As an accountant, we just say, say motor vehicle expense. <laughs> Expenses. I can't put your could you fines. You also need to disclose because that one should be desirable expense. But as an accountant, how would you recognize it? Yeah, motor vehicle expense. <laughs> yeah, motor vehicle expenses. Number eight, capital repairs, including the cost of extension. And now, when you talk about the capital repair, for example, you have a motor vehicle. Repair costs are allowable expenses. Are we together? Repair costs because they are uh, recurrent. What about replacement of an engine? Do you do it often? No. Now that's what you call a capital repair. A capital repair. So a capital repair becomes a desirable what? Expense. And a capital repair qualifies for ANT. We entire good. Uh -huh. and then number eight, number nine, legal fees and other professional fees of capital, which actually legal fees and professional fees such as audit fees eh, are allowable expense. But in this case, we are saying that legal fees and other professional fees uh -huh, of capital nature in relation to number one, borrowing yeah, and IS-23. So you know what we call the borrowing cost. Eh? Yeah, for example, the lawyer, uh, you're in the process of getting a loan and then you incur some expenses, legal charges for the lawyer to prepare some documents, now, that's what we call preliminary expenses, which should be capitalized under the cost of borrowing. So those expenses are desirable expenses. So you're saying that uh, professional fees of capital in nature, in addition to borrowing, number two, valuation of property, also preparation of partnership deed, and what? M with the memorandum of what? Association. Good. Yeah, those are what we call preliminary expenses. Eh? Number 10. Other expenses regarded as non-business income. I, it's not, not non-business income, but non-business expense. Can you change that? Other expenses regarded as non-business expenses, e.g. donation. Is donation a business expense? No, but note that we are saying that donation is a desirable expense. A donation will only be allowed if they are made to the charitable organization. Organization, such as what? Orphanage. Churches, because huh? orphanage is right? Yeah. They care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see that one is an uncharitable, uh, it's a charitable organization. Eh? Yeah. What if you donate to the political party? <laughs> you donate to the foot, uh, football club. Uh -uh. Uh, so, now those are some of the desirable exp expenses. So, note that all the other expenses which does not fall under that category, they are what? Allowable expenses. So, desirable expenses. So, 
I'm giving you two minutes. Can you go through that? Only desirable expenses. So now you can highlight the following. Now the major desirable expenses. Number one is the capital expenditure, tick that. Personal expenses, also you can tick that. Depreciation impairment, amortization, also you can tick that. Uh -huh. Number five, all provisions. Now whenever you see it was a provision expense, that one is a desirable expense. Uh -huh. Let's go to... Yeah, actually, those are enough. Eh? You see that capital expenditure, personal expenses, depreciation, or provision. Also, number six, all tax related expenses. Tax related expenses. Good. So now we can go back now. We look at what are some of now allowable expenses. Yeah. What does allowable expenses relate to? Allowable expenses. Now, arable expenses, the expenses which are wholly or exclusively incurred in the production of income, in production of income, that means day-to-day -day opera operation. The guiding principle is subject to the provision of the income tax act, and they include, number one, trade bad debt, which are what? Specific, yeah, that's the specific bad debt. Number two, we have capital allowances, yeah, such as investment allowance, wear and tear, Number three, we have subscription to a trade association. Number four, number four, legal cost in connection with acquisition of Paris of not more than 99 years. If it's more than 99 years, that one becomes a desirable expense. Interest on loan for business, 
development. Yeah, interest or not is a day to day operating expense because after all, you are borrowing to finance the business. Uh -huh. Number six, advertising expense or marketing expenses. Eh? Yeah. Also, we have Ross brought forward from previous years with a limit of four years, but that one has been adjusted. Eh? Now, this can even be carried out for even five years. What does it mean? Now, note that if a company makes a loss, if you take the income minus expenses and then you has a loss or you have a loss, we don't tax the loss. Also. You only tax the profit. Now, this loss in the next financial year will be considered as allowable expense. Expense. What if the other year also you make a loss? Also, that loss you can also be offset in the other year for a limit of four years. Four years, but now have been increased to five years. Good. Uh -huh. Number eight, legal fees paid on listing securities, uh -huh. then cost incurred for prevention of soil erosion, scientific research related to business, and all other expenses except none, uh, except desirable expenses. Good. So now that's all about the income, taxable and untaxable expenses, allowable and desirable expenses. And actually, once we are done with this topic, so I can also ask you that you can also sign in in the app. Eh? You look at the video I had done for introduction to business income. Yeah, so that kind of this topic, I mean, this uh, today's class, the introduction should be at your fingertips because that's what you'll be doing for, uh, for the, all the other remaining topics of taxation. So now let's look at our specified sources of income. Specified. Sources of income. Now, specified sources of income are income from different channels which cannot be offset against each other. And number one, one of the specified sources of income is the business income. What is business income? Now, business income is day to day income. Now, for example, as a school, our business income are the school fees. Are you together? Yes. What if now we invest, assume that we buy share in another company, we will be earning dividends. That one is not a business income. If we invest in some properties, we will be earning some rentals. Also, that one is not a business income. So business income, their income from day-to-day -day opera uh, operations. Number two, we have employment income. That one is on an individual basis. Uh, then number three, we have other investment income. Investment income. If you invest in shares, what do you get in returns? Dividends, good. If you invest in bonds, what do you get in returns? Interest, good. Yeah, those are the investment income. Number four, we have property income. Property income. If you own property, what do you receive? Rent. So rental income. If you have copyright or patent, it's also part of property, right? Intellectual property. What do you earn in return? Loyalties. Good. Then uh, number five, uh, we also have the farming income. And then number six, we have the post employment or the pensions income. Eh? Yeah, post employment income. Now, those are some of the specified sources of income. Number one, we have the business income, that's day to day income, employment income, investment income, that's the dividend income or the interest income, property income, that's rental income and loyalty. And then number five, we have the farming income and then the post-employment income. Now, why do we have to separate them? I'll come to explain why do we have to separate them. Eh? It's because of any income or any loss, or whenever you have a specified source of income, it's an income that you cannot offset one income against another income. I'll come to explain that. Eh? Good. So that's all. Now, we said that we have three forms of business. You see that a business can be run as a whole. Yeah, sole proprietorship 
or as a what? Or as a partnership? Or as a or as a company? Then we see that for sole proprietorship and partnership, there is no separate legal identity, or there is no separate taxable capacity between the business and the owners. That's why if you own a, a business which is not a company, are you getting? So how do you pay your taxes? Once you determine the profit from the business, you combine that income together with any income you earn as an individual, and then you'll be subjected to graduated scale rate of tax. Are you together? What about a company? For a company, once you get the profit, you'll be subjected to a tax rate of 30%. 30%. So you're saying that any income from the company subjected at the normal rate of 30 percent but for the two, there is no separate legal identity between the business and the owners. So the income for the business will be combined for the owner, and then you tax them using this graduated scale rate of tax. Is the rate they're using in our last class eh? when you're doing cross border issues, right? Yes, the other class. Eh? Yeah, that's what we call the graduated scale rate of tax. Now let's start with this taxation of sole proprietorship. And a sole proprietorship business does not have a separate taxable capacity and the profits are taxed on the owners using the graduated scale rate of tax. Salaries paid to owners, personal expenses and drawings are not allowable expenses. Those are desirable expenses. Eh? If you have a business, this is your business. Assuming you have a school, eh, which is not a company, and then you are under salary. So any amount of that salary expense becomes a desirable expense. Why is it a desirable? Why is it a desirable? Hmm? But you are working there. Assume you have 10 employees. You have 10 employees. You are one of the director, actually an active director. So any salary paid to that director will be a desirable expense. But any salary you pay to other employees will be a desirable expense. What is the case? Remember, you think that there is no separate legal identity between the partner and not uh, oh, but the partner or sole proprietorship and the business. So it's the same person, right? It's like taking from this pocket, you take it to the other pocket. Are you getting? Because there is no separate legal ident identity. Also, if the business is uh, being run in a business in a building owned by the owner, so this you are building, and they usually do pay rent, right? Now that rent will go to whom? To the owner, right? So now that expense will be regarded as the Sarabo expense. The Sarabo expense, good. Now let's look at taxation of partnership. Taxation of partnership. Taxation of partnership. Now a partnership does not have a separate taxable capacity, and their profits are taxed on partners using the graduated tax rate uh, uh, tax rate scale. Each partner is taxed on aggregate of the following from the partnership. Now, in case of a partnership business, how do you determine the tax liability of each partner? Eh? Usually do prepare an allocation schedule. How do you prepare our allocation schedule? Assuming you have two partners, we have partner A, partner B. Then here you have the totals. So you'll take any salaries, wages, any commission you had paid to that uh, to those partners from the business. Then you also add interest on capital. Yeah, sometimes the partnership, you see the capital you had injected in the business, they try to pay some interest. Now that interest will be paid back to the partners. Eh? So to the partners will be added as an income. So you add the interest on capital, then you deduct interest on drawings. Now, once you do that, now that's how now you get a profit or a loss share. It can either be a profit it can either be a loss. How do you determine whether it's a profit or loss? Come show you how to determine that. And that's how you get your taxable 
profits. And this profit we have here, the total profit, should be the same as the profit you have gotten from the business. Taxable income minus allowable expenses. Then from there, now you can add other income, other specified income, other income, uh -huh. such as rental income. Assume partner A has some rental income, partner B does not have. Uh -huh. Also farming income. Assume partner A is not a farmer, but partner B is a farmer. Then from there, now you aggregate the total. And that's how we get what we call the adjusted taxable income. So first of all, you determine the taxable profit from the business. And then for each partner, now you can also aggregate any other income earned by that partner during that financial year. Good. Lastly, now let's look at taxation of corporation or companies. Taxation of corporation or companies. Mm -hmm. A company has a separate legal identity and therefore has a separate taxable capacity. Uh -huh. Profit are taxed at the rate of 30% for resident companies and that 7.5% for non-resident company. Good. So the normal tax rate is 30% for resident company. For non-resident company, the rate is 37%. The then transaction between the business and the owners or the shareholders are considered to be business what? Transaction. Yeah, because in this case, there is separate legal identity. But between a partner and the partnership business will not be regarded as a what? As a business transaction. Then director salary is an allowable expense. Director salary is allowable expense. What about partner's salary? It's allowable expense. Are you getting the difference now between the two? If you are a director, that means you are one of the shareholders. Any salary you get is allowable because there is separate legal identity between the director and the company. But in case it's a sole proprietorship or a partnership, the uh, expense, I mean the salary will be a disallowable expense. Good. Any question? So now we go to the formats of presentation of financial statement. It's time for prayers. I eh? uh, can have five minutes.
Let's proceed. So now let's look at the format of determination of taxable income. Now in determining the taxable income for the period, the following two formats are adopted. So we have two formats, depending whether it's a complete or incomplete record. So number one, in case of complete, in incomplete record, case of incomplete, Now, whenever you're given an incomplete record, this means it's upon you now to prepare it from scratch, the income statement. So when preparing the income statement, if it's a normal marketize or general marketize, you take the sales, then you raise the normal cost of sale, and that's how you get the gross profit. Once you get the profit, now you can add other operating incomes. Eh? So you add other operating incomes, not all the incomes, but other operating incomes, then you deduct allowable expenses. For deduct, the deducting the expenses, only the allowable expenses will deduct. And what you get here is our taxable profit. Now this taxable profit is now what we call the business income. Now, once you get the business income, now you can add other specified sources of income, other sources, other specified sources of income, such as rental income, interest income, uh, royalties, we add all that. Now what you get here is our adjusted, taxable profit, as simple as that. So you take the sales, there's the cost of sale to get the gross profit. Then you can add any other, other operating income. Then you deduct allowable expenses, you get the taxable profit. Or alternatively, alternatively, now this one is a normal market. Test. What if the company offers services? Okay? For example, a bank, as a bank report sales, or insurance company, they're offering services. Eh? Yeah, so in case of those services, so just take the taxable incomes, then you deduct allowable expenses, as simple as that. You just need to know what are their major operating income, what are their operating expenses, their allowable expenses, and that's how you get now the taxable Now, once you get the taxable profit, now you can add other specified sources of income. And that's how we get our adjusted income. So that's a case of in complete record. Now, what if now you are given the complete record? Number B, in case of complete record. Now, a complete record, this is where you are given the income statement. That means you're also given the profit. You have the income, you have the expenses. But now what you have is accounting profits. So you know what's accounting profit? Eh? So that means an accountant are taken all the income without classifying the current and I mean uh, the taxable and untaxable. Also, expenses are deducted all the exp expenses. So now you have the tax man. How do you adjust? Now, for the tax man, you just need the taxable income and allowable exp 
expense. How do you prepare that? So in that case, now you start with the reported profit. Uh -huh. So, sasa unanza uku panda. Then, of the expenses he had deducted, we have some expenses which he was not supposed to deduct. Are you together? Now, that's what he called desirable expense. He had deducted, what do you do? You add them back. Eh? So, you add back desirable expenses. Once you add back desirable expenses, then you raise allowable expenses never deducted. You raise allowable expenses never deducted. And this one usually is just the capital allowances or the wear and tear. So that's wear and tear, you deduct that. Also you deduct, when you're determining the income, you had included all the income, but you have some income which are not supposed to be taxed. So you eliminate them because they're already included in the total profit. So you also deduct none taxable incomes. Yeah, for example, if the company had disposed an asset at a gain, that amount had been included as other income, but that income we said it's non taxable. So you eliminate that. Also, you eliminate, we have some taxable income, but they're specific. If the company had some rental income or investment income, that means has already been included in part of income. But you're saying that that income is a specified sources of income. So you raise specific incomes. Now, what you get here is our taxable profit. And this taxable profit is what you call now the business income, the income from day to day operations. Now, once you get the taxable profit, now you can add back now the specific income. Yeah, you add back this specific income. You deduct and then you add it. And that's how you get the adjusted taxable income, adjusted taxable. Now, why do we have to deduct and then add back? Because you see that you cannot offset one source of income against another income. Now, this is what I mean. For example, from the business income, day-to-day -day, uh, operations, you are generating, and then there was rental income, an amount of 2 million, and then you also have farming income, and also 1,000. So give me the total taxable income, how much is that? This one, you don't require a calculator. How much is that? Good. Eight? Is that 8,000? Yes, the teacher is always right. I know you're trying to confirm. Now, let me repeat my point. I'm trying to say that you cannot offset one source of income against another source of it. So what happens? Business income is a specified source of income. Rental income, it's among the investment or the property income. Farming income is a specified source of income. For tax purposes, from business, that's okay. From rental income, it's okay. Now, farming income, it requires so So you have to exempt, you have to access so So in this case, they only access six and two. So that means the taxable income will be eight. Now, assuming from the business, you made a loss of nine million. That's a business income. But from rental income, you had made a profit of 100,000. And in this case, KRA, you see, if you set off, that means you'll end up with still with a negative, right? That means you not pay tax. No, KRA, we can allow this one, you don't assess it. But these were 100, it was an income. So the only, the taxable income, they're assessed how much? 100. So that's why you have to separate the specified sources of income. That's why you have first of all to deduct them to determine how much was the actual income from day-to-day -day business. Then from there, now you can assess them individually, the specified sources of income. Ah, yeah, good. Then before we do some computation, I want us to look at installment tax. So what are installment tax? When does the company pay taxes? 
Now, assuming the year, so first of all, let me run this. Now, according to understanding, according to understanding, if the financial year starts on 1st of January, let's assume 2020, 2021. That means the financial year will end in 31st of December, 2021. So where do you prepare the financial statement? When does the company prepare their financial statement? At the year end, eh? So the year ends on that first December 2021. So which date will we prepare? I said year end. Eh? So that means by that first December 2021, will you have they prepared the financial statement? Uh -huh. Okay, when do they prepare? You know now you are finalizing, eh? You need to know when do we prepare the financial statement? The first month of the the first month of the year, eh? Monia wengine, amam na maoni. Sorry? Six months after the year, eh? The first month, within the first month, six months, eh? Maoni. Maona maoni. What do you think? Next year, eh? Between first of January and and the sixth month, eh? uh -huh. okay. yeah, actually, what happens? Once the year ends, that's not when you prepare the financial statement. So, so. But yes, you're given six months. But mostly what happens as a company, once the year ends, you need to hold an AGM, right? And you hold an AGM, you know, say, I don't have to do it, I'll leave dividend and happy. So that means, yes, you're given six months, but most of the company, they need to prepare within the past three months. You prepare the financial statement, they get audited, then you call for an AGM. That's all. Before now, the financial statement are authorized for it, for issue. So that means once you prepare the financial statement after the year has ended, that's when you determine how much was the profit for the year. Assuming that once the year ends, uh, let's assume now you'll determine the taxable profit maybe on February. And we realize that you had made a profit of 10 million. Tax rate is 30 percent. 30 percent of 10 million is how much? 3 million. When did you pay this 3 million? So now my question is, when do the company pay the taxes? The tax liability for the financial year ended 2021 was 10 million. I mean the tax liability was 3 million. When do you pay that tax? <laughs> the next year. Uh -huh. Use the previous, use the previous year tax. Cool. That's what happens. Now, this is what happens. You see, this is February 2022, right? Now, by the time the company is determining that the tax liability is 3 million, actually, by the financial year end, already they had already paid this 3 million. 3 million. But you can ask yourself, how do they know? How do they know that they make a profit of 10? That means you're supposed to pay a tax of three million. Okay. You see, you don't pay the tax at the end of the financial year. Are you together? Yes, you pay them in install, installment, in for installment. And how determine the installment payment? Because we are saying that at the start of this financial year, first of January 2021, at the beginning, the company knew how much tax they're supposed to pay within the entire financial year. They usually know at the beginning. Are you together? So now that tax. They start paying in install, installment. How do we determine the amount of installment tax? So to determine the amount of installment tax, they usually take the previous year tax, previous year tax, then you multiply by one ten per. Yeah, that's the mentality of KRI. That if last year you had paid ten million, this year you are supposed your tax average should increase by ten per, ten percent. So we'll take the previous year tax. They multiply by 110. Now what they get, so already now the company knows that at the beginning of this year, within the year, they'll pay that tax. So how do they pay? They distribute into four installments. Eh? 
and so it will be paid on or before the 20th of number one, the fourth month, number two, the sixth month, number three, ninth month, and number four, twelfth month. So that is April, June, September, and December, so here will be paid 25 25 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, right together. So that means by the financial year, they had already paid their total tax. Then once they prepare the financial statement, that's when they determine how much was the actual tax liability. Now, assuming that during that financial year, they had already paid 2.5, but based on the profit for the year, the actual tax liability is how much? Three million. That's how now they determine there is a cabalas they need to pay. And that's why you have what you call the current tax liability. What if they have they had overpaid? That means during the year, they had paid a tax of 3.5, but the actual tax liability was how much? There's an overpayment of zero point? Yeah. At the beginning of the year, that one will be recognized as a what? That's what you call the current tax assets, right together? Yes. And they carry the not refund. So what will happen? It will be sort of against the tax liability for the other period. Good. So I think I've explained that. So we take a one minute break, then we do taxation of banks. And so that's all about the introduction eh, of business income. So you can watch those videos in our app. It's well explained. And then for those using the apps, uh, there is a question we did. I mean, a topic, cross-border issues. Eh? Now, cross-border issues, I had done a question under VAT. I did VAT, then the last part I did uh, cross-border issues. But since the rate has changed, we have another video, of which some videos will be uploaded next week. Actually, most of the videos of taxation, eh? for those who are dying just with videos, because the rates has changed. So and that's what I want us to look at, new capital allowances. For those who have done the previous tax. So remember here in here, you used to classify class one, class two, class three, class four. Eh? All that has been merged. And now you don't have to cram because always will be provided with the schedule. So can you take out your past paper, the first page of your past paper? The first page of your past papers. You can either use for August 2022, or for April So now let's discuss that. That's investment allowances. So currently they have classified all the assets into four classes. And that's provision, it's known as now the investment allowances. Eh? 
So now let's start with the first one. You're looking at the investment allowance. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we'll be doing on a daily basis. Uh, I mean, whenever you are doing a uh, business income for the remaining all the topics are about that. Eh? So the first class, number A, it's on buildings. You see, under the previous uh, rates, we used to have what you call ID, IBD, with various classes, eh? commercial and commercial. So we don't have to cram that. Eh? So actually, it's not a topic. Before, it used to be a topic. But you don't have to teach it because now you have just the consolidated list. Eh? Yeah. Now, the first part, we have buildings. Hotel building, now we look at the rate of investment. It would be 50% for the first year of use. Then... 25% that's on residual value per year on reducing balance. What does it mean? Hotel building, also the first second breath we have building used to manufacture. That's what we call the manufacturing building. Also hospital buildings, the rate are the same, as well as petroleum or gas storage facilities. It's 50% for the first, of, first year of use. Then, 25% on residual value per year on reducing balance. Now, let me interpret that eh? because most students were not able to interpret that. Now, assuming you have the refinancial year, year one, year two, year three, then you constructed uh, maybe a school or maybe a manufacturing plant worth 20 million. So how will you claim the capital investment? First year, you will take 50% of 20 million. That means you will claim an investment around an amount of 10. Then from year two, year three, year four, year five, the rate will be 25% reducing balance. Let's see over. How much the residual value? So you will take 20 million, you minus 10. So the residual value is how much? 10 million. So how much would be that? 2,500. Year three? Uh -huh. You'll take 25%. You see the residual value was 10. Eh? You'll take 10, it's on a reducing balance. So you raise 25, eh? what you have already provided for, eh? minus 25. So it will be 25% of 75, right together. So how much is that? 1870. What about year four? Year four now you'll take 25%. You can take 10. First of all, you minus 25. Then you minus 1870. Or you take 10 minus 25, you get 75, right? So you'll take now 75 minus 18. Yeah. It's based on the return down value, right? Eh? So you know what's net book value? What is net book value? Is the cost minus depreciate? Now, for tax purposes, we call it return down value. Now, this is the cost minus capital allowances. That's what we call return down value. For accounting purposes, it's net book value. The cost minus depreciation. Good. So that's what we mean by residual value per annum on reducing balance. Mm -hmm. Now, still at part A, we also have educational or hostel buildings. Uh -huh. So it will be, as well as commercial buildings. Now, what are commercial buildings? Now, let me explain what are commercial buildings. Now, this building will qualify at 50% year one, falls under this category. So, so start with and done. Do you have offices? Yes. Do you have the showrooms? Conference rooms? Gym? Now, that's what we call now commercial buildings. Now, commercial building will qualify at the rate of 10 per. 10% good. Yeah, so commercial building, so it's 10% per year on reducing balance. Then another thing I want to explain is what we call auxiliary assets. What are auxiliary assets? Yeah. Now, this building, water tank, things to do with like backup generators, perimeter wall, parking. Are you getting? Now, those are uh, assets directly attached to that building. They are known as auxiliary up assets. If you have parking, you incur some costs uh, for parking. 
they are setting a perimeter wall, all that cost will be included to the cost of building. If the building is qualifying at 50% the first year, also that cost will be the same, right together. Yeah, so that means if the building was 20 million and then you incurred some cost for perimeter wall, parking cost, all that, total to a 1 million, also the cost will also be included. Then you have also said some auxiliary assets such as escalators, uh -huh. yeah, backup generators, uh -huh. water pump, water tanks, all that. Eh? Uh -huh. Now let's go to the second part. The second part is machinery. Now the second part is on machinery. So now part A was building. Number B, machinery. Now the first class we have machinery used to manufacture. That's what we call manufacturing machinery. So it will be at the rate of 50% for the first year, 25%. It is I mean, residual value, hospital equipment, ships or aircraft. Are we there? Yes. A ship or an aircraft, how will you provide the investment allowance? 50% for the first year of use, and then 25% on residual value reducing balance. Then we have motor vehicle and heavy earth moving equipment. In short, it's all about self propelling assets. You know, before you used to have class one, heavy earth moving self propelling assets. You also used to have class three, other self propelling assets. The rate was totally different. So, in this case, they have merged all the self propelling assets, such as what? Tractors, bulldozers, vehicles, tuk tuk, motorbikes, anything to do with self propelling, right? Together. And in which is self propelling, <laughs> tipas. All those, eh? so it will qualify at the rate of twenty-five percent per year on reducing balance. Then we have computer software, computer hardware. The rest have been merged. Eh? Software used to be at its own class. Now all the computer software, hardware, calculators, printing machine is at the rate of twenty-five percent per annum. Uh -huh. Furnitures and fittings. All the furnitures and fitting also includes partitions. Eh? Yeah, the rate will be 10 per. Actually, what used to be at the rate uh, class four? See, class four used to be other machinery, not in class one, not in class two, not in class three. So the rate is 10%. So furnitures, fittings, all those. Eh? Telecommunication equipment. What are telecommunication equipment? CCTV, copy. The CCTV telecommunication equipment. <laughs> I'm a water telecommunication equipment. That's him. <laughs> ah, you're assignment. When I'm doing water telecommunication equipment. So, so. Uh, good. Uh -huh. Then, film equipment used by local producers. Also, machinery used to undertaking. Uh, operations and a prospecting rights. Yeah, they are called mining assets or mining equipment. Eh? So we shall discuss that when we'll be doing taxation of petroleum companies. And then other machinery. Yeah, any ma other machinery you know, eh? such as what? You have said partitions, neon sign. You know what a neon sign? Or billboards? Yeah, billboard is part of an asset to a company, right? Yeah, all those will be at the rate of 10%. Then class C, we have the purchase or acquisition of right to use fiber optic cables by telecommunication operation, 10% reducing balance. Farm works. This one is Okulima, eh? It's 50% in the first year of use, and then 25% yeah, reducing balance. Good. And so that one you don't have to cram anything, eh? Because after all, Okishindo, just go back to that table. 
and look what you want, it'll be given the rate, be given that schedule. So now let's start with business income, now taxation of business income. Taxation of business income. We start with banks. Banks. How do the bank operate? What are the major source of incomes? Are the interest on? Yes, interest on loans. Eh? What are their major expense? The opposite. <laughs> uh -uh. Customer deposit is not an expense, it's a liability. Are you together? Now, liability gives rise to an expense, and that expense is, is the interest on loans. I mean, interest on customers' deposit. Loan to a bank is an asset, are you together? Because from that loan, they expect some interest income. So it's giving rise to an income. So that means interest on loan is an income. That means loan is an asset to the bank. Also, at the major expense are the interest on customer deposit. That means customer deposit is what? It's a liability. Yeah, the bank, they're holding money that does not belong to them, belong to the customer. So therefore becomes a liability. Good. So now let's do that question. December 2011, question three. Eh? Yeah, the question is already in your notes. If you have the notes, you can use that question. Eh? Yes. December 2011, question 3A. Yes, I have already written a question for you. Eh? You see, I'm a good teacher. Eh? Mm -hmm. Do you appreciate by the way? I'm a monanga. But whenever Nikosa kufanya what you expected munaanza ku complain eh? <laughs> yeah? You don't always appreciate eh? Imagine taking time to prepare notes for you. Naandika illustration and I know you have the past papers. But najua you will take 30 minutes to search for the question and we course. But after all, you're human beings eh? Kitu mzuri eh? Fanya makosa. <laughs> you had your time, eh? So now let's do that question. The following is a statement of comprehensive income for PESA Commercial Bank Limited for the year ended that 1st of December 2010. We have the incomes, we have the expenses. Now, after that, is it a complete record or incomplete record? Don't guess, eh? Is it a complete record or incomplete record? Ita? For example, what's the difference between a complete and incomplete record? Complete or what? Complete record, huh? Completed. Musiangari as well, sana hita change ni yung meona. You know, you're pretending it's like you are looking for a crew. There is no crew there. <laughs> it's a what? And that's a, you see that a complete record is where you are given the income statement, right? Together. Income, expenses, and the profit. That's what you call a complete record. In complete record, you are just given a trial balance. It's upon you to extract incomes, expenses, assets, liability. So this one is a complete record. You see that in case of a complete record, you start with what? Yeah, you adopt the bottom up, right? You start from the net profit, you add back the salary expense, expenses. Can you go back to the format? Go back to your notes where you had the format. In case of incomplete record, uh -huh, we say that you take the reported profit, then you add back the salary expense. So that means one of your major concerns are the salary expenses. You also add what? You address 
arable expenses never did up. And that one mostly is the investment allowance or the capital allowance. Number three, you guess what? Untaxable income, right? So also in this case, you need to focus on untaxable income. Also, you raise the specified sources of it, income. So now let's uh, go step by step. Eh? Now let's start with the incomes. Now for incomes, you see that it's either taxable or non-taxable. Non Interest on loan and advances from customer. Is it taxable or non-taxable? All incomes are taxable except non-taxable. So we have said that for the bank, their major source of income are the interest, right? Who okay, on interest? Know that it's an operating income. Therefore, it's the taxable. Good. Interest on loan and advances from customer, taxable and untaxable. Taxable, adicative, see, adicative, taxable, just the right team. Loyalty income. It's, no, loyalty is a taxable, but it's only that it's among the specified source of it. Income. You said it's taxable, but it's among the specified sources of income. Uh -huh. Interest on treasury bills. I think a taxable. So in, in the bank, what would you want to interest? Eh? What you is a income, which is taxable, right? It's an operating income. Interest on placement with other banks. Taxable, just right. See? Fees and commission. That's taxable. See, they usually do charge you for having an account there, right? Yes, yeah, so to the bank is an income, which is a day to day income. So it's taxable. And realized income from foreign exchange transactions, non taxable. Yeah, we see that all unrealized income are non taxable. Yeah, that's why I told you, can you go and review? All the non taxable income should be at your fingertips, as well as desirable expenses. Profit on sale of furniture, non taxable. Yeah. I remember explaining that here, that all the capital gain on disposal of the asset are non-taxable, right, NT. Now let's go to the expenses. Now expenses, it's either allowable or disallowable. Now what we need here, you see we are adopting the other method. Net profit, you add back disallowable expense. So in this case, we're only now concerned with the disallowable expense. Number one, staff cost. That's allowable, that's an operating expense, right? Occupancy expense. Arable is only uh, the rent and expenses. Impairment loss on goodwill. It's arable. Yeah, we said impairment, depreciation, amortization. Mm -hmm. Depreciation. It's arable, right? D. Deposit protection fund contribution. Now, previously that used to be arable expenses for the bank, but nowadays it's a disarable, right? D. Mm -hmm. Interest on customer deposits. Arable. That's actually their major expense. Are you together? Yeah, it's an operating expense. Interest on deposit from other banks. Arable. Good. Interest on uh, director's remuneration. Directors. Directors are arable. Are you together? Yes. Audit fees. Now, for audit fees, we have for the current year. That is arable, right? And a provision for previous year. That one is disallowable. Here it required last year, and actually it was a provision. Are you together? With that, all provision are disallowable expense? expenses. Uh -huh. Operating lease expense? That's allowable. Operating lease. Instead of buying an asset, we lease. Eh? So that lease, uh, rent or paid are allowable. Loss on disposal of equipment? Disallowable. Because you have to see equipment. Because equipment. Because I'll say that. In case we sell an, uh, we sell an equipment at a gain, that gain will not be taxed. Are you together? Therefore, if you sell it at a loss, that loss should not be allowable. So therefore, it's disallowable. Finance cost. The finance cost is the interest on borrowing. Are you together? Interest, in, interest expense is allowable expense. So that one is allowable. Provision for bad and doubtful debt. Yeah, we see that it's only allowable when it's specific. But general provision is a disallowable expense. So you might be given, uh, we'll be given some more information on that. Provision for interest in suspense. D. provision. All provision are disallowable. Yes, we have not paid that expense. It's just a provision. So all provision are disallowable. 
Then we have net profit. Eh? You want to say that is uh, Additional information. Staff cost in crude, number one. Provision for salary increase. Desirable, yeah. All provision are desirable. Uh -huh. Pension contributions. Pension contribution. That's a salary. Right. So it's a day to day expense, right? Desirable. Staff terminal cost. Staff terminal cost. It's like what we call severance fee, right? The yeah, staff terminal cost. Arabo is Arabo. Here than your staff. So Kumansha is an operating expense. So therefore it's Arabo. Provision for staff repairs. This is Arabo. It's a provision. Eh? Number two, provision for interest in suspense related to non-performing loan advanced to the executive director. So that one is not applicable. Operating risk expense related to photocopy list from farm dealing uh, in office surprise. Number four, director's remuneration include, director's remuneration include school fees for the, yes, sorry? Operating? Okay, they are trying to explain the expense given in the trial balance. Now, this operating, uh, this operating expense, are our expense? Expense, yes. They are our expenses. So, directors' remuneration include number one, school fees for director students. That one is it's a, it's a private expense. Space, yeah, not a directors for Totoa Kashuri. That is a, not a business expense. Grant entertainment allowance. D or R. Um, client, inter we are entertaining our clients right, together. So that one is a business expense. Expense. How can you entertain your client? Buying ranch. Entertainment is not about food. <laughs> okay, it's okay. You can buy for them. <laughs> food. Uh -huh. You know, also free Wi Fi is part of entertainment. I'm a Yes, I remember when I was in college. Eh? So even if I want to pay school fees for 500, I'll make sure I go to the bank. Eh? And that will be a Peter, Peter Kwanza. Eh? Because, you know, there is free Wi-Fi. Eh? Eh, kwa kitabo sana. Internet haikuwa, free Wi-Fi haikuwa like nowadays. Eh? Eh, so that was way back in 20, I think 2013. Eh? So naenda kwa bank. Kuna marindikuwa naenda, there was a free Wi-Fi. Two hours. I'm only depositing five hundred. After that, you may download all the games required at Tata, all the books I wanted because I used to have the ebooks eh? and I download. I talk up as a happy, happy person. Eh? So that's part of current entertainment expense. expenses. Mm -hmm. Then we have passage for expertise director. That one is our album. Number five. Provision for bad and doubtful dates comprise. Now remember, you see that provision for doubtful dates will only be allowable if they are specific. Eh? General, they are what? Disallowable. Now, this is a complete record. So we are taking the net profit. We add back what? Disallowable. So in this case, we only focus with disallowable right together. So now we need to look at the general expenses. That's what we are focused with. Now, for the general provision, you are given 1st of January 2011. Those are opening balances. Charge for the year. How much is the charge for the year for general provision? How much is it? Let, let, me, let, let, me, let me repeat again. Now we are looking at general allowance provision. Are you together? We have looked at the 1st January 2010. That's the opening balance. Then charge during the year. How much general? Now that charge for the year is what they took to the income state statement and should be treated as a desirable expense. Now the opening balance, the closing balance, that one does not affect because after all, you only take the charge for the year. So in that case, can you take 72? Take 72. So that's what will add back to the as a part of desirable expenses. Number six, capital allowances for the year were agreed at 8.4. Good. Required. Required. The adjusted and adjusted statement of taxable income for the year in that first December 
2010. So this was PESA Commercial Bank. Computation of taxable profit or loss. For the year ended that first of December. So this is a complete record. So it'll start with the reported profit. How much is the reported profit? Or the net profit. So it'll start with the net profit. Yeah, we had an amount of yeah, two thirteen to seventy. Then we add back. Desirable expenses. Now let's go back to the expenses. What you had included as D. So at the expense, we had staff cost, right? No, staff cost is arable, right? Can you go to number one? Number one. Number one, you are told that staff cost include. So we had some desirable expenses. Yes, provision for salary increase. Right? Provision for salary increase and amount of 80. Also, we had provision for staff leave areas. An amount of 86. 80. Uh -huh. The other expense we had was impairment loss on goodwill. Uh, impairment was an amount of 8,700. Uh -huh. We also had depreciation. Depreciation was an amount of 36,800. Mm -hmm. Deposit protection fund contribution. Uh, that one was an amount of 10. 360 because it's payable once in a year. So therefore it's regarded as a fixed expense for the year. Mm -hmm. Then we also have director's remuneration. Can you go to note number four? Now note number four, you told that. Director's remuneration include school fees for director student. An amount of 1600. Do we have any other? No. Uh -huh. Go back to the expenses. We also have audit fees. For the current year, it's allowable, but we had other provision for previous year. Amount of 400. Uh -huh. uh, we also had also loss on disposal of equipment. The loss on disposal of equipment uh, was an amount of 19, 640, you add it back. Finance cost is okay. Then we have provision for bad debts. Can you go to note number five? Note number five. And there is something I told you to tick. Eh? That's the general allowance, the charge for the year. Now the charge for the year is what now they had already deducted in the income statement. And how much was it? Yeah, 72. That was the charge for the year. That's the expense they had included to the income uh, statement. And then we had provision for interest in suspense. An amount of 20, is that 2,400? Yeah. So you see that you add back all these allowable expenses, then you deduct what? Then you raise allowable expenses never deducted. And which are those allowable expenses? Number one, we have the capital allowances. And you go to the last note. Now, once you add back all these allowable expenses, now you deduct allowable expenses never deducted, and that's the capital allowances. An amount of? 
8400 also you raise now non taxable income you see the net profit for the year had included all the income and expenses but we have some incomes included here which are not taxed so we eliminate them eh? so now let's go back to our income statement under the incomes the first one was what unrealized income an amount of 9360 also we had the profit on sale of furniture Profit on sale of furniture, uh -huh, which is an amount of 43.80. Also, we see that you also did that specified or specific incomes. Uh -huh. Still had other incomes. We had one, eh? royalty income, of which we are told that it's net of withholding tax. Uh -huh. So royalty was an amount of 95, you deduct that. And that's how we get our taxable profits. So how much would be a taxable profit? So in that case, we'll have an amount of 295, 890. Now, once we have the taxable profit, now, this is what we call now the business income, the profit from day-to-day -day operations. Now we can add specific or specified sources of income, specified income. And we only had one. What was that? Royalty incomes. Now, let's be here. You are told that the royalty income was net of withholding tax. Now, we want to add it because what we have done, we have deducted what we had already added, right, together. But if it's net of withholding tax, if you add it at 95, it'll be taxed twice. Are you getting? So you have to take it back to the group. Gross. So we take it back to the group. So it's 95. The withholding rate for rot is how much? There is something I told you, try it, eh? We say that all the holding tax at the rate of 5%, except for, for what? Interest and dividend from circles and corporate cooperatives. Yeah, apart from the interest and dividends from circles and cooperatives, all the other withholding taxes at the rate of 5%. So you divide by 0 0.95. So how much was the gross amount? was 10,000. That's how you get our adjusted taxable income. And our adjusted taxable income will be an amount of 305,890. That's how we determine the adjusted taxable income. If you're to get the tax liability, if you're to get the tax liability, you will just take 30%. Uh -huh. How much is this? Of 305,890, they are supposed to pay a tax of how much? 912? 760? Seven, good. As simple as that. So you have answered part one. Now, part one of the question was. But one of the required we are told that. Assuming, sorry, adjusted taxable, a statement of taxable income for the year in that first December 2010, we have done that. Number two, now assuming PESA commercial bank taxable profit for the year ended that first of December, that is 20. Uh -huh. Are we reading from the same question? Nigapi. Assuming PESA Commercial Bank Limited taxable profit for the year in that first of December uh -huh, was 560 million. Calculate the final tax 
that was due on or before 30th of June 20. Uh, the final. Now, the question is asking about the installment tax. Now, 2014, going backward, they used to pay in two installments. Eh? Six months after six months. That means semi-annual, right? Then at the end of the year. But from 2015 now, you pay four times, right? So it's all about how determine the installment tax. Because in this case, they were asking about the final tax. We said that installment tax, you'll take the previous year's tax, then you multiply by what? One ten percent Now, this is 2010. So the previous year tax was 209. How much was the tax? Hey, to excuse the upper. So many ten Are we there? So you are given the taxable profit for the previous year, uh, which was an amount of five hundred and sixty. Then you multiply by you multiply by thirty percent. Now I said you take previous year tax. What you're given is not previous year tax. You are given what? Tax above profit. Are we together? If the previous year tax above profit was 560, you multiply by that. First of all, determine how much was the tax, right? Then you multiply by 110. 160. 184. Yeah, how is this amount supposed to be paid? So now it will be paid on or before. 20th of for the month, sixth month, ninth month, and 12th month. Uh -huh. Yeah, it'll pay. This is in April, right? This is in June, September, and December. And then we pay quarter, that's 25%. Of 184,800, 25% of 184,800, 25% of 184,800, 25 of 184,800, 25 of 184, 800, divided by four, you get 46, 200, 46, 200, 46, 200, 46. So that means by the end of the financial year, they could have, uh, they have already paid an amount of how much? 184 eta? Yeah, so that's what they wanted. Now, what will happen now? Now, we are done answering the question. Eh? By the end of this financial year, 2010, you had already paid how much? 184. But after the preparation of the financial statement, this was the actual tax liability. Got it? But you had already paid how much? There was an overpayment of how much? So the tax paid, they had already paid 184, 800, but the actual tax liability was supposed to be 90, 760. So there was an overpayment. Now that's what we call tax asset because to the company, they will not pay. In short, it's tax refundable or recoverable in the future. An amount of 93? Zero? Zero, three, three. So that's the overpayment. Now, this tax is to be offset against the next year tax. How? Ah, to angari up next year. Next year, we want to determine the installment tax for the coming period. You'll take the previous year tax. How much is the previous year tax? At your E, Sasa 91,767. You multiply by one, 10. They want to determine for that. The other coming financial, that's 2011. How much would be the tax? It'd be how much? It's as I multiply, uh -huh. 10940. This is the tax for the coming period. But already they have an overpayment of how much? 93,033. So now they'll take 79, 11, they divide by four, right? 
25, 25, 25, 25. Good. So we shall do another question on uh, banks in our next session. So that's the end of that session. Thank you.